What's up, you guys? Sean Ross Sapp, Fightful, here with a name you know. You've seen him here on Fightful a couple of times, but man, at a, at a much different place right now. We got Richard Holiday. Do, do you have, like, anything to talk about right now, Richard Holiday? I don't know. There hasn't really been that much going on. I mean, we could just chat and see what happens. Yeah, yeah. I've got uh, I've got some items over here we could discuss. Here's here's a, a cap for my water bottle. But you know, I think I think there maybe has been a, a thing or two. We we've reported about a thing or two that you've you've been through. You've been backstage at AEW. You have left MLW. You are a survivor. You have returned to wrestling. What haven't you done lately? First off, the thing we want to know is how are you doing? How are you feeling? Yeah, most importantly, I'm feeling fantastic. I am just in such a great state of mind, um, body, spirit. I feel amazing. Every day is like a blessing. It, it is beautiful. Um, I feel awesome, man. I, I really do. It's 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 been a really wonderful um, past couple of months, you know, since everything. But um, every day is a blessing. Everything is everything is great. And as as we know, you were diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma, and I've I've learned a little bit about this process of you finding out. But the limit of what I've found out is, as you know, via Alex Hammerstone telling me how you guys could kind of tell something wasn't right last summer. But you, being the person that you were, you're like, eh, something will pass. It'll be all right. But then you you find out what's going on. What what a, a, a you know, I'm, I'm asking you what you're comfortable divulging in this sense, but what's that process like for you to sort of discover something that then not only changes your life, but that of everybody around you? Right. Um, you know, at this point, I, I don't, you know, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, it's a topic where I'm not going to talk about all the time, but listen, I'm totally cognizant of what I represent and, and who may need to hear this. And that is so cool for me. So like if I can help one person by telling my story, that's, that's amazing for me. Um, in fact, I actually met uh, a kid this past uh, weekend in North Carolina uh, for AML wrestling and, and we chatted and, you know, hopefully I was able to help him a little bit. So, uh, but going back to your question, it was the unknown that was the most worrisome for me because I remember when I did that match against Hammerstone, in New York for MLW, man, I showed up. So I was living in California for the month prior. And then MLW had flown me in for that show in New York. And like, I'm leaving California just like pale and, and frail and like very odd. And I didn't feel good. And I just remember just like getting to the arena that day and just pounding NyQuil or not, not NyQuil, excuse me, DayQuil. And I'm just taking as much of it as I can. I'm telling court, I'm like, I'm okay. I'm like, I'll be fine. Like I'll push through and court's like, are you okay, man? Like, are you sure? And I'm like, I'm fine. I'm fine. It's just like, it's just how we are as wrestlers. We're just like, we'll push through. We'll worry about everything on the back end. And, um, I ended up going out there and having like a match that I was actually very proud of, um, with Hammerstone. It was a last man, st no, a, a false count anywhere match. So we were all over on the roof in Melrose ballroom and, you know, we're fighting over people's balconies. People are looking at us <laughs> and, uh, I thought the cops were going to get called. I got thrown into a plant. And it's just like you just forget about how you're feeling. You just get kind of so engulfed into everything. But then after the match in the next couple of days, man, I was just feeling just still feeling it. And I'm like, maybe I'm just really sick. You know, maybe I maybe I just got like a really bad bug or something. And then, you know, just one thing led to another and then test after test after test. And then eventually they came up with the diagnosis, which they did. And when when that's given to you like what were the immediate responses like was it okay here here's the plan here's how you get over this what were you even thinking uh, about from a wrestling perspective then because obviously if if you don't live you can't wrestle but so much of your living is wrestling yeah so once they told me i was just like okay when's everything start like there was no time to think it's just like I'm, like I've been feeling really bad for a long time. Like it's about time you just told me what it was. So let's get through that. Okay, boom. Here's the diagnosis. What do we got to do? What's the prognosis behind this? And you know what are the steps needed to take 
not so much to get me back into the ring, but like, how do I get back to just living normal civilian life? How do I get back to just getting back into the gym and feeling like myself and looking like myself and all those things, the more important things, right? And then the wrestling will eventually follow. And I knew that. And, you know, the doctors were so assured to me. They're like, you're going to be fine. Everything's going to be okay. It's going to be a process, right? Like, this is not something that you just snap your finger and fix. But we're going to do what we need to do, and you'll get back in the ring. Like, don't worry. And I, I never wavered from that. Like, I always was just, it'll be there. Wrestling will be there. The, the industry is not going away. The business isn't going away. I may be going away for a little bit, and that's, that's okay. Because I will be back, and I'll beat this. And that was just my mindset the entire time. Like, I would allow myself... MOAs, moments of anxiety, just moments. That's it. Um, I would have a moment of anxiety and then get back into it because it's just stay on the course and, and, and do what you have to do. And then you'll get to where you want to be. And now here I am doing a fightful interview with you, enjoying <laughs> a nice Starbucks coffee and, and, and loving life. How was MLW during this process? Obviously, the I, I would imagine you maintained a, a close relationship with Court Bauer throughout that entire process. You've been working with him for years. Yeah, Court and I are actually really close. Um, me and Court probably got closer during the whole uh, time frame. And, you know, we would talk wrestling, sure. But we would talk about life. We would talk about family, talk about the Yankees, talk about the Giants. Uh, we actually have a lot of commonality behind that. So, like, we would just chat, you know, and he would just check up on me from, from time to time and, you know, I would always, you know, text him and, you know, say, hey, I saw this on, on MLW and I, you know, I thought this looked really good. And, you know, we would talk about the product for sure. And we've maintained a really good relationship. They were MLW was very good to me during the whole, um, you know, during the whole process, I, I guess you can say. There's, obviously, there's not much they can do. It's like they, they can't assist in the healing process, but they can make me feel more comfortable about it. And they certainly did. Towards uh, towards closer to your return, you had revealed that you were actually a free agent and your deal with MLW had expired. So, I mean, you had been a fixture in MLW for, for years. I mean, that's where a lot of people came to know you. What went into the decision to not stay with MLW? And, and like, I, how, what kind of a decision was that for you? Because, I mean, that's that's been a large part of your life as well. Yeah, so... MLW for me, I am so appreciative of my time there and everything that I did there. And I really do feel like that was the catalyst to any sort of success that I have had in wrestling. I feel like MLW has catapulted me into that uh, stratosphere, wherever that may be. And a lot of my fan base and a lot of the people who know me are going to know me from, from Major League Wrestling. And I'm very appreciative of that. Now, I was there in 2018, I want to say. Uh, I believe, yeah, 2018. So I was coming up on about five years, right? I mean, almost half a decade in in MLW. So, you know, my deal was eventually, like, just like any contract, right? Like, deals eventually are going to expire. Uh, they're going to come up, and then negotiations are going to happen in order to either extend or, or not extend. That's just the nature of any contract in any sport or any business. So I was there for, for quite a bit of time, and then during the whole – um, time frame where I was away, the, the, the deal was starting to expire. Um, and then it was just honestly a very simple uh, human to human conversation that we had. And they were more than fair with me. And uh, I couldn't be more um, happy with the way that the discussions actually went. Um, they heard my side, I heard their side. And it just ultimately uh, what was best for both parties. Uh, being the company and being myself as an individual was uh, was the part ways. Is that a, a door that is has remained open? It seems like it was very amicable, this this split. Totally amicable. Um, I would like to think sure. I would love to think that the door is still open. Um, you know, I'm not a I'm not a door closer, especially in business. <laughs> I, I, I don't I don't think that you should burn any bridge. I don't think that you should close any door. Uh, because you never know where your, your career is going to head and what might be the best fit for you and uh, who you like working with and who you don't like working with. It's, you know, so I, I would love to think that the door is still open and, and it was nothing but amicable. And to this day, I was texting court the other day talking about how bad of a trade deadline this was for the Yankees. You know? <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a Reds fan. I don't want to hear about it. Oh, well, you know, this is this is your time to shine. So, listen, I'm an honorary Reds fan okay. the rest of the way. 
I am an honorary Reds fan the rest of the way. The big red machine all day. I'm I'm rooting for you guys. The Yankees stink. So, but yeah, I mean, we, I we, 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 we and him were talking about that. So, Story's and open. you announced or you made your return, and you had a, a ridiculously busy schedule since then. I'm like. This guy knows that he just came back from lymphoma, right? Like, you're wrestling multiple times a week, like, all over the place, from, from beyond wrestling open, like, AML, as you just mentioned. How quickly after you said, ready to head back, did that schedule just fill up? So, I've been calling this the summer of holiday, and I really, like, believe that it is, like... I announced that I was taking bookings again and like I just got flooded with people who were just like, we'd love to have you. Let's let's do it. They gave me this date, this date, this date. And my schedule is like honestly very full going forward. And I'm going to be popping up at a lot of places. I'm going to be debuting in, in new places in new states. Uh, I'm going to be making returns. Um, I'm all over the place. And it's it's really a, bl- a blessing in that sense. Um, but I was just like, I only know one speed. What's the point of just I was away for so long. Sure, I can ease myself into it. I can do a booking here, a booking there. Like, I'm not going to get any better doing that. Like, I missed all this time. I have to make up for that. Not in a sense of, like, uh, um, you know, proving to people what I can do in the ring. But, like, I need to get back on the grind. I need to, like, if another door is going to open. We were just talking about doors. If another door is going to open, I need to be the best version of myself that I possibly can be to go through that door. So, in order to do that for me, it's do as many uh, events as I can, have as many matches as I possibly can. And I love being in front of the crowd. I've missed it. So, you know, any opportunity I have, I'm probably going to take it. I noticed that your return was just maybe a week or two shy of it being one year outside the ring for you. Was that was that a coincidence? Was that like a benchmark or anything that you were looking to to get back? I mean, that that is very impressive to be able to go through what you went through and then make it back all within a 365-day period. Yes. So my last match with MLW was 352 days prior to the match I had with Brad Hollister um, for uh, PAPW, which is where I was trained. And that was very important for me to have my return match back at um, that establishment so that friends and family more so can can come to the return. And actually, um, it was streamed live on fight and I was privy to the numbers and... (laughs) Might I say, <laughs> um, uh, we're talking Mike, about Mike Weber was happy on that night. <laughs> it was happy. So, uh, but the, but the, the fight thing was a byproduct, a hundred percent. Um, I wanted friends and family to be there and they were, and it was 352 days. Is it a coincidence? Probably not. Um, I think it was more so like probably just a, a testament to the determination of like, I'm going to get back as quickly as I can and to do it within a calendar year was pretty cool could have been 364 days could yeah. have been 340 days but it happened to be 352 i'm so happy to see you back and and you know you've been in the news since you've been back as well and i want to talk about a couple of those matches but uh wrestling observer had reported that wwe had discussed internally the potential of you coming in now i think it's it's pretty well publicized they've had a hiring freeze this year between them hiring, I think, 20 main roster people between August and December of last year, and then all of a sudden, none for like eight months. It's very clear what's going on there. They've also got a merger going on right now, so ideally, when you're doing a merger, you don't bring in a bunch of people, but seeing your name in the news like that almost, I would say, within a few weeks of your free agency, your return being announced, how does that make you feel, and and is there any light you can shed on maybe what you've heard? Yeah. Um, ultimately, I'm not in the boardrooms, right? So I'm in any company, that's that's WWE, AEW, anywhere. Impact, it doesn't matter. I'm not in any of these boardrooms. I'm just simply me. And the best thing that I can do on a day-to-day basis <laughs> is be the best version of Richard Holiday that I can be every single day. Now, what that means, ultimately is now that I am a quote unquote free agent, which is new to me, right? I haven't been a free agent in this in this business in four and a half years. So it's kind of fun to, to flex that muscle a little bit. But um, all I can do is just be the best version of me. 
Now, what that means for all of these companies, if they do have interest in me or they don't, is where do I fit into the puzzle? Like, does it make sense to bring me in now? Does it make sense to not bring me in? Does, what does make sense? I don't know. Um, I have a pretty firm grasp of, you know, what I offer to this business and, and what I can offer to any product, you know, from a, from a talent standpoint. So I'm confident in my ability. I'm, I'm very poised for the future. And, you know, whatever happens, happens. I think the, I think speculation is, is probably one of the most fun things about wrestling is seeing people on Twitter or Instagram being like, I hope Richard pops up here. I hope he pops up there. And he was there. He was here. And it's just like, you know, nobody really knows at the end of the day, but, you know, the, the speculatory, um, you know, tweets and things like that are always fun to, to, you know, view and watch and think about. And the landscape is categorically different than the last time you were a free agent. I mean, not only for you, which before you were fairly young in wrestling and now you have this wealth of television experience and have, have competed on TV for like four and a half years. But the last time you were a free agent, there was no... AEW. There was an ROH that stood separately of AEW. There was just a completely different landscape in professional wrestling. The indies even looked a lot different at that point because there was yeah. no AEW. So it's so much different now. What are some of those differences that you've experienced? Yeah, it is wildly different to think about, right? Because like when I first signed with with MLW, you know, it, it was... Uh, I would like to think at least that that was one of the spots that you wanted to end up. And, you know, we had a really deep talent roster, like so many guys who are making a lot of noise in the industry now were on that MLW roster, right? You look at anywhere across the board, you're going to find a little sprinkle of MLW probably everywhere, right? Um, what's different for me? Nothing, you know, because I am what I am. I, I've, I've always been authentic in my presentation. I've always been authentic in, in who I am and how I come across and how I do interviews, how I walk to the ring and how I talk and how I wrestle. I've always been true to Richard Holiday, um, whether that's in, uh, signing a contract in 2018 or potentially signing a contract in 2023 and beyond. I don't know, but it's, it's the, the signature is going to be the same. It's going to be Richard Holiday. It's going to be authentic. It's going to be the same thing. Um, you know, so I don't really know what's different in that sense. I just know for me, same guy. There were rumors that you were backstage at AEW Collision in Hartford. I know that's somewhat local to you geographically. Uh, is that true? And what is it? I do live in Connecticut. You do live in Connecticut. I'm just saying. I'm just saying for any other Connecticut companies that are interested as well, but. Uh, what was that process like? How how was it there? AEW is cool. I mean, it's 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 a really cool spot. I mean, it was it was great to uh, you know it was great to see some old buddies. Um, you know, obviously, I got some uh, some old friends there, and um, it's always good to uh, you know to see what else is out there in the business and what else is is available and. You know, I don't even know if it's available, right? I mean, it's, it's you know, I'm, I'm not trying to put any speculation or any clickbait or anything like that. Um, that's my job. That's your job, buddy. <laughs> you know, uh, my, my job is to, uh, you know, just uh, give you something to click on. I don't even know what my job is at, at this point. Um, but, you know, I do live in Connecticut. You do live. You do, in fact, live in Connecticut. Uh... It, you know what? It's, it's not a state that really has too much to offer. Right. So I guess when when some exciting things are happening in Connecticut, you might want to take advantage. I don't I don't know. That's, that's true. What, what is there to do in Connecticut? So it's primarily a drive through state. Let's be perfectly honest, unless you're going to stop for pizza, which I don't eat, I eat pizza twice a year for the okay. most part. Um, and yes, the, the dates are mapped out. Of OK, exactly. That I that I eat. Pizza. What are those dates? Um, I can't reveal that. Okay. I can't reveal those dates. Um, but I, I don't want people, you know, going down to Worcester Street and, and, and trying to find me while I'm having the pizza. I'm going to have to dig into your past. Like, I'm going to hit up Hammerstone, MJF, Alicia. I'm going to find anybody that I can to try to find out your mapped out calendar pizza dates. You know, I actually took Hammerstone. So in New Haven, it's called Worcester Street. 
Mm -hmm. And that's where that's where you get classic New Haven habits. And I took Hammerstone there, and he said it was the best pizza he ever had. Really? Yes, yes, that that is a fact. Um, but uh, got what were we talking about? Connecticut. Connecticut. There's some nice beaches. There's 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 nice beaches. There's uh there's uh there's pizza, and then there's me. That's pretty much Connecticut. So um, I, I gotta ask you since. The last time we talked on camera, I've grown a mustache. Yes, I, I, I know what you were going to ask me. Yes, that that was exactly it. What's up with the mustache? You 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 seem to be enjoying that. I'm more than enjoying it. Um, you know, I think it's a. Uh, is it a summer look? Potentially, yeah. Is it a forever look? I don't know. You know, I think it's uh, it's definitely a look either way, and. It's really just uh, just just grown some something different out there for the most part. I like it personally. I'll tell you what I like. I like words of wisdom. Words of wisdom. And you have been through some ups and some downs. And allow me to share these words of wisdom. I take a okay. couple uppers. I down a couple downers. But nothing compares to these blue and yellow purple pills. I've been to Mushroom Mountain once or twice, but who's counting? But nothing compares to these blue and yellow purple pills. That is a quote from uh, Eminem in his group D12, Richard Holiday. Why have you not learned this yet? You know, I mean, I was, if you just saw me, how captivated I was. You are. Bars. Your bars, your flow was immaculate, Sean. Well, they're you actually be, D12s, you, but. Well, I mean, it, it's almost like you made them your own. That's true. That is, you know, you, it, it was it was so authentic. It was lovely. I was captivated by that performance. Um, that was actually the second time I've ever listened to D12 in my entire life, and I have to say, the first time was via you as well. I gotta say, uh, I was I was hoping MJF would back me up because when I interviewed him, I was like, you know, Richard Holiday didn't know D12, and he said, well, he shouldn't because Eminem is better as a solo artist. And I said, oh, okay. Very well, he is. I, I mean, you know, you know, D12 is is a blip in the radar. Eminem, Eminem is like, you know, wow, a top five rapper. That's arguable. That's arguable. I would love to hear your top five rappers. That I'm sure that wouldn't be like an article that everybody would be up in arms about. I can I can give you my top five rappers. Okay. Yeah, um, and this is uh, this is objectively subjective. If that makes any sense, like I truly believe that these five are probably the best, even though they are my five favorite. Um, but it's got to be Jay Z. It's got to be Tupac. It's got to be um, J Cole. Okay. It's got to be probably Eminem and uh, and Biggie. I gotta say, you know, you know what's interesting. Four of those were included in uh, Eminem's top nine from uh, Till I Collapse. He says, Reggie, yeah. Jay-Z, Tupac, and Biggie, Andre from Outcast, Jada, Corrupt Nas, and then me. Yeah, he did say that. There you go. So, I mean, My, I'm close. Right? I'm, yeah, I'm, that's I'm that's close. pretty close, like 80% of it. And I don't think J. Cole was around back then. So, there no, we go. He's my favorite of the, of the newer rappers. So, before we go... After all that you've been through, how do you look back on this last 14 months of your life? Because you know, some people who emerge from things like this can, can emerge with a different outlook, can emerge with sort of a, a new lease on, on what they once took for granted, any, any number of things. And what type of advice would you provide to anybody, but especially young athletes that might be experiencing this? Because... I cannot tell you how many times I've seen somebody say, Richard Holiday is going through this. I know somebody who's going through this and the like. Yeah. So a couple parts there. How do I look back in the last 14 months? I honestly try not to. I try to look clearly ahead. If I didn't have the scar on my chest, I probably wouldn't be reminded of it all that much. Um, but, Again, like I mentioned, I'm cognizant of it. And I have a lot of people who have reached out to me, a lot of people, um, who have unfortunately either been diagnosed themselves or had a family member 
been diagnosed. So any advice I can give them would be to just completely remain strong, allow yourself those MOAs that I talked about, moments of anxiety, but they're only moments. You can beat it. Anything that's that life throws at you, you can beat. Um, and it's, I do believe everything happens for a reason. And whether you find out that reason or not, hopefully you do. Um, I do feel like, you know, I have my, my purpose in life and, you know, what I can do. And I, I truly believe that pro wrestling can be a vehicle of inspiration, right? I can, I can use this vehicle to drive it home without even being, uh, without even bringing it up. Right. Um, like we talk baseball. Uh, I've mentioned this a couple of times. I'm a huge Anthony Rizzo fan. Um, he had the same thing I had, but he goes out there and plays first base for the Yankees every day. And it's just like, you would never even know, but that's pretty inspiring. So that's ultimately what I would want to do is just have a long career in pro wrestling. And you would never even know, but if you did, you could be inspired by it. So that's ultimately my goal with everything. And, and, you know, I, Anybody who needs to reach out, you know, they can find me on social media and, and, I, and I will answer um, when it comes to that. Uh, we had a friend close to our family and their child had, uh, ironically enough, a scar on their chest from an operation they used to have. And they had they said it was uh, their superhero logo because you know, he powered through some tough things. Richard Holiday, you are an inspiration. I really admire uh, your, your ability to talk about this stuff, to compete through this stuff and entertain and make so many people smile and we greatly appreciate you man we we're so glad to have you back in wrestling uh the world is very lucky to get to experience your talents that you have shared with us so uh, I'm, I'm excited to see what you do i mean my god your schedule is insane right now uh and, I, and i'm loving it man before we go let the people know where they can find you let the people know where they can follow you and support you yeah thank you um very easy. You can follow me on Twitter or Instagram or both, hopefully, right? Um, <laughs> at most marketable. Um, within those, you can go on my link tree and, you know, if there's any uh, merchandise that you're interested in buying via me, by all means, go ahead. Um, but at most marketable is where you can find me. And, and Sean, listen, I appreciate your time and and uh, all the uh, hard hitting questions that you asked me, particularly <laughs> about my, my, uh, my choice of facial hair. So, yes, um, I do appreciate it. Guys, thank you all so much. Richard Holiday, thank you so much. Until next time, guys, we're out. Buying pay-per-views on NordVPN.com slash Fightful is going to enhance your pay-per-view buying process. Now, one subscription to NordVPN has so many different benefits, but if you're a big pay-per-view buyer like myself, UFC, boxing, pro wrestling, all that good stuff in any combination of the three, if they're doing a fight circus or something like that, this subscription will pay for itself after one or two pay-per-view buys. Change your virtual location, pay for it at the prices that other people are paying for it in the UK, in Australia, et cetera, et cetera. And you can get different interfaces. Maybe you don't like Peacock and you want to check out the WWE Network the way that it used to be, the way that it was designed to be, the easy navigation, so on and so forth. Maybe you want to watch AEW without commercials. Maybe there's some other overseas services that you can't subscribe to and you want access to them. NordVPN.com slash Fightful gives you that with a great deal and a 30-day money-back guarantee. Even better, 24-7 tech support. So if you have trouble navigating any of it, they can help you out. Fastest VPN on the planet, nordvpn.com slash Fightful.